Hey guys, Rendon here with TJ Free. In this video, I want to quickly show you a cool free program for creating mockups and user interfaces for phone apps, mobile apps, and also desktop software apps. And this program is called Pencil Project. Just go ahead and do a search for Pencil Project. I'll also include the link in the description of this video. Uh, and this is the website that you will download from. It runs on Windows, I believe it runs on Windows, Linux, and Mac. I downloaded this Ubuntu version that worked for me, this Debian package, because uh, I'm using Linux Mint. But if you click on Downloads, you can find the download for your system. So it runs on, it has a Mac image uh, with 32-bit and 64-bit Windows installer. If you're not sure what to install and you're using Windows, just go ahead and click this 64-bit Linux installer. It'll download. It's a .exe file, so when that's finished downloading, just find that file and go ahead and uh, follow the on-screen instructions to install it. And then you can just get to it from your start menu. And this is what the program looks like when you first open it up. And so this is not to be confused with Pencil 2D that we've been covering, which is an animation software. This is called Pencil Project, and it lets you create a mock-up, and it has different assets you can choose from. You can do flowcharts and text and clickable buttons. And so we're just going to start by creating a new document. And I'm just going to very quickly go over this. I'm not going to do a whole tutorial series on this. So this will just be a longer video showing some of the things that you can do with this software. Um, so for example, we have a shape. If we just left click and hold and drag, we can drag a rectangle into here and move it around. So this is going to be for if we want to create some sort of flow chart where we have maybe different options down below here. This isn't necessarily a user interface. And then we would add text into each of these, or we can have different types of markup text as well. Uh, there's some different things we can do. We can bring in an image and then load an image from our computer. And we can show different lines. So this is an interesting aspect. Uh, I'm going to go to File, New Document, and we're not going to save anything because I want to show you we have this basic web elements as well because we can do like a regular uh, oops, a web pane. So this is like kind of like our web page or a pane in our website, and we can bring in like different hyperlinks, different links that people can click on. We can bring in a heading. So you could design a web page, and this actually would be you could go to export the page, and you could design a web page this way. We can export it as an HTML document. In fact, I'll just do it for fun, just so we can see an example of what that looks like. So this is what that basic web page looks like. Uh, you could maybe use this. It's ideal for mockups, but you could maybe even use it to design a web page, I suppose. Uh, but the real thing, cool things I want to show you is that you can use this. If we just go to File, New, Document, we can use these GTK desktop elements to create a software app or a mockup for a software app. So we can bring in a window and get it the size we want it to be. And then we can bring in like drop down menus or check boxes or radial boxes. And we can double click to change the options that we want of these. So very quickly we can create something kind of cool. You know, we can put a progress bar and then we can resize all this and change it. And we can even change the colors of all of this as well over here in this properties panel. Uh, but the cool thing about this is we could then export this and then send it to a software developer if we're not a software developer and we could have them uh, create this uh, at, based off of our mock-up they can create this and we can come down here to this untitled page and right click uh, and we can go new child page and then we can create a second uh, second page um, called whatever we want and then we can go create and then this page we can use elements to link to so we can say if they if the user clicks on that part of the, the thing then take them to this other part with that has all these different text boxes or it has something else you know happening in it and then we can go back and forth between those two. We can link from one page to the other. Uh, how do we get back to that other page here? Oh, we click on this unsaved document. So we're here. And then we can right click and say, oh, was there a button we can have here? So we get this OK button. And we right click on it. And then we go link to. And then we link that to the second page. And then when someone clicks on this button, it'll actually link to that second page. And we can get a sort of an interactive demonstration of this by exporting this page as an HTML document. So we'll go to a single web page and then we'll go uh, export and I'll just save us on the desktop quickly. Uh, and then if we open this up we'll see it shows our thing here in, a, in sort of a little web document. It shows both pages but also we can click on the button and it takes us to where it, we told it to go. So when we click this button it jumps to this part and if we add buttons on here we can click so it's not really a real app, but it's an interactive mock-up, which is kind of cool. And we're going to see that in a second here. We can do that again uh, for 
uh, mobile apps. So we'll go new document, discard changes. We can scroll down. It has a Windows XP, which I'm sure everyone wants to design a Windows XP app, right? So this is themed more to look like Windows XP. And we have all these different things that Windows that looks like Windows XP. Let's get rid of that. That's outdated. Um, and then we can go, where's the ones we want? You, you have different flowchart elements, which is cool. If you want to use this just to create a flowchart or an interactive flowchart. Uh, mobile Android. So here's a cool one. So we have the, the iOS. So we can actually drag in an iPhone or an iPad. And we can zoom out here somehow. Click up here to zoom out. Oh, so we'll have to resize our page borders to do this. Okay, so I created a new document. And to change the size, we actually just right click and go to resize canvas. And so to do this, we can just if we were to drag in this, we can right click and go to resize canvas fit content. And then it'll make sure that our, our canvas fits the content exactly. Or there's some other options. We can go resize canvas and we can fit the content with padding. We can say how much padding we want to have around the outside in pixels. So that's some different options for that. And then we can zoom out. But now that we have this iPhone, um, or we can do an iPad or different things, but we can drag in a top bar for this and we can drag in different buttons. And we, so we could create a, an interface here where we have this maybe at the bottom and we want to have uh, yeah, there's all, all kinds of different things we can drag in and have buttons that people can click. We can have this can be our interface and it's nice because as we line up it shows us when it's lined up on the center. You can do the same thing using um, I've done mockups like this in Inkscape or GIMP but this is nice because the buttons are already uh, easily here and we you can just yeah just drag and drop them. and you don't have to worry about styling too much you can see what an on-screen keyboard would look like and then the cool thing is we can link to this as well so this will be our first page and then we can add another page and we call this um, I don't know what we want to call it but we call it something and then we go create and then this needs to be oh we should have duplicated that one so we should have done let me go back here I'm gonna left click and highlight everything in here and I'll just right click and go to copy and then when we go to this next page, I'll right click and go paste. And that'll show everything in here. And for some reason, it's showing it larger. So we'll just bring this into here. We'll right click and we'll go resize to canvas with padding, just like we did on the last one. So this should look the same as the previous screen now. I think it will. And then we can just change these buttons around. So we can have it be uh, that when they click on this, it takes them to just a new, uh, a new part. We'll have an alphabetical list over here on the side and some different things going on. And this will give it the appearance that it's, uh, we'll have this button be called back and we'll link it, we'll right click and go uh, link to the untitled page. And then we'll go to the untitled page and we'll call this button next. And then we'll right click on this and we'll go link to the next screen. And now we can go to file and we can go to export and we can export this as a single web page, but under this template, we're gonna change it to a clickable prototype HTML template. We could have done that last time as well, and we can choose what pages we want to include, and then we click export, and I'm gonna save this again to my desktop, uh, and now when I open this up, it's going to be a clickable prototype. So it's gonna show the different screens we have. When we click next, it just jumps to the next page. When we click back, it goes to the back page. So you can see how you can quickly create a nice little prototype. And this is just a uh, HTML file and it has a resources folder that it has to be that has to be there with it that has all the different images that it's using and tells it how where to link these buttons to. But you could actually package this up and send it to someone. You could you could do client work and do a mock-up for a client or you could do something for yourself and create a nice interactive mock-up without having to use uh, like an online there's web resources that let you do this as well but this is one that you can do just from your desktop without having to rely on a, a cloud service so a really cool thing I hope you're seeing sort of what you can do with this and there's different ones as well so you can do um, I think there was an Android one yeah so you can you can do Android mock-ups using like an Android phone and just the interfaces are going to be a little, a little bit different for it. And then also you can design your own. So you could bring in your own screen or your own whatever you wanted to do and do your own mock-up. And there's this, if you click these little squares in the bottom left-hand corner, you can go to, this shows you which ones you're using. If you don't want to use, for example, the XP, you can just say, don't make that one visible. But you can go install from repository and there's other things you can do. Um, you can just do a like a generic type of wireframe. Um, I, one that I installed was this um, GNOME 3, all the GNOME 3 widgets for doing like a, a UI for um, a desktop application. 
So there's all kinds of different things you can get. Well, not all kinds. There's a few you can get here. But you could create your own and share with the community. Or you can go install from URL if you know of a private one. Uh, or you can create your own. I'm not sure the process for doing that. But you can create your own um, uh, collection to be able to use mockups from. So hopefully you've seen how this could kind of be useful for creating mockups for mobile apps, software, and even just doing wire charts or interactive wire charts. Hopefully you found this video informative. Go ahead and find the links in the description of this video to download and get started using Pencil Project. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below, and I look forward to catching you in the next video.